Hello, welcome to National Women's History Museum. My name is Liz Maurer. I'm the Director of Program here at the museum, and I'm joined today for our Facebook Live on First Ladies History and Cooking with Andy Oak. Great to be here again. Hey, Andy, who is the firstladiesman.com, is the author of a brand new book, Volume 2, Unusual for Their Time, which is a history of kind of the second half of the first ladies, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Volume one? Volume yeah. one was Martha Washington through Ida McKinley, the nineteen or the 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 seventeen uh, hundreds and eighteen hundreds. Volume two picks up in the nineteen hundreds and goes all the way up to and through what we know about Melania so far. Okay, so we're also going to so we're going to be talking about some of the more recent first ladies uh, that are featured in Andy's book, and we're also going to while we're talking about it make some first ladies recipes, which you will find in National Women's History Museum's brand new cookbook, where we have a recipe for each one of the first ladies from Martha to Melania. Yeah, it's so exciting for you guys. That's a, it's, it's a great book. It's a great right. idea. I ran into so much of that in my travels on the road, and for you guys to have it there in a nice, it's perfect for the holidays, great gift items both, right. but uh, I'm excited it's for exciting. you guys. Very happy. Right. So today we're going to make Florence Harding's waffles and while I get started with that and I'm going to tell you what the ingredients are as we go along I know that um, one of the things I loved about Andy's book were some of the great stories he had about Florence Harding and how she was kind of almost a precursor to the contemporary way we think about how the press interacts with very much so with, um, uh, the, the Hardings the, yeah the, the heart the Hardings were okay. newspaper people of yep. uh, 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 Warren Harding ran the Marion Star and he basically ran the Marion Star into the ground. Enter Florence Harding, and they got married, and she saved the paper financially. What she did for distribution and circulation and delivery, and everything was just revolutionary, the way she, she brought this newspaper back to life and ran it and made it profitable, therefore making him a viable candidate for the last uh, successful, oh yeah, 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 we gotta talk about it. All right, well, like, well so done. Florence's waffles start off by separating two eggs into the whites and the yolks, and I'm going to... I couldn't do that if my life depended on it. I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm, no <laughs> sla I'm no slacker in the kitchen, right. I definitely know about that. Right. So I'm going to give eggs. you those to beat the whites into peaks that are stiff without being dry. And while you're doing that, I'm going to beat the yolks just a little bit, and I'm going to add in a tablespoon two tablespoons of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so tell me more about Florence. How did Florence Harding's um, waffles become famous? Well, at the, at the home in, in Marion, mm -hmm. yeah. Ohio, there's a little outbuilding, like a shed, and they actually set it up for the press to move into and use an office, mm -hmm. and they ran a telegraph line so they could file their stories okay. and everything, and Florence, in the mornings, would make these waffles and walk them out to the press mm -hmm. and serve the press. I mean, she, and I've traveled enough in television, and, and this goes in many different walks of life. When, when people are well-fed, they're happy, yeah. and they're gonna write better stories about you, especially because you're mm -hmm. well-fed, and she, she stood out there. There's video of Florence right next to Warren, Right there on the front uh, main street that runs yeah. through Marion, Ohio. S serving up these waffles? Well, uh, the, the, the press covered it, and she's out there with her husband glad-handing and, and, and helping him run that campaign. And part of that was keeping the press in the side yard well-fed okay. with these waffles. So I have, I've made some these nice sugary uh, yellow eggs. I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. And then I'm going to add next two cupfuls of flour, and then I'm going to add a pint of milk, which is two cups. So as I do that, um, so one of the things that you talked about in your book was about how Florence Harding was a great business person, mm -hmm. right? So how did she? What kind of business was she in? How did she get involved with that? Well, that was that was what she came to, what she brought to the relationship. It was already established, the Marion Star, and she had this this knowledge from her father that she had a really, really kind of strained relationship with. It was definitely, um, uh, he, he wanted a son, which we see with other first ladies and stuff that, that have gone on through time. Um, but he taught her more male things of the day, uh, bookkeeping. He was a banker, he was a very successful and wealthy man, but didn't approve of a lot of her previous relationships with men and didn't approve of 
just so much that she did in her life. It was a real struggle for her, and she was always trying to please him, but she did pick up this business sense, this knowledge of numbers and facts and figures, similar to like an Ida McKinley, whose father worked in a bank. So when these women get these non-traditional educations and life experiences that were more inclined for men to know in these times, that's when they surface as these remarkable women who can step into these non-traditional women roles and resurrect the finances of, of, a, of a paper in Marion, Ohio and become this successful businesswoman. Right. So she um, is part of the beginning of the, so she's kind of controlling her image too, isn't she, as she's presenting herself. Very much so, and putting herself out in front of the cameras and, and, and video was or okay. film was around at this time, so she was a very visible okay. first lady where others would not have been. And so who comes after her who is kind of thinking along the same lines about controlling their the, the way that they appear to the public or the press. You know, the, 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 the very next administration, the Coolidge administration, Grace Coolidge was a very affable, very friendly, very smiley, very perky first lady, and her husband was was not. A, a yeah. Silent Cow was a very, he was more like a, a James Madison, and Dolly Madison was such a great entertainer and party host that, that she really balanced him out well, and Grace Coolidge did the same. Uh, the Hardings were a bit of a, a political power couple. Yeah. Bit of this. Yeah, you take okay, what I think. I think I'm bit. good on that. All right, so so they're part of they're a power couple. Yeah, she's, very much so. And mm -hmm. she she is putting okay. she is she is controlling the image of her husband that goes out to the press. Okay. She is not bribing the press with waffles, but she's keeping them content with waffles and feeding them and entertaining them in the side yard. But she's also standing there, like I said in the video, right next to him on the front porch, shaking the hands, welcoming the. The, the business leaders and the, and the party leaders, the, the, the political party leaders into the house. I mean, in fact, she redecorated the whole front room and modernized it from the, from the Victorian backside of the house into this more modern, forward-looking, so she would look like a, or the Hardings would look like, her husband would look like a modern man of the, of the 20th century. So she, the, the image was everything. She even went right down to the wallpaper and the furnishings and the, the, the accessories, the accoutrement in the room, you know, that they would put out to make them look like this modern couple that wanted to take the country in a forward, modern direction. Yeah, remind me, who was the first First Lady to donate her dress to the Smithsonian? The, uh, Helen Taft, right. wonderful, right. yes, yes, right. yes, from our last time together. Yeah. Helen Taft was, was the first First Lady to donate her dress to the Smithsonian First Lady's exhibit. And it's kind of like that, you know, prom dress or that homecoming yeah. dress. Once you wear it once, they see you. Right. You're not going to wear it again, so she donates it, and that's what we think of, the majority of people, when we think of first ladies. Now, but that's really interesting. Do we think of the, you know, never being able to wear it again because of modern media? I mean, certainly that is a modern watch, spin right. on it, yeah. yeah. The, and, 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 but but even, right. even going back, mm -hmm. like going far back to, um, I would even say Elizabeth Monroe, there are instances of these women changing these dresses. Right. Not, not wearing them again, but not wearing them in the same incarnation. You would raise the hemline, or lower the hemline, or add a wrap, or add a bodice, or all kinds of things that would go to a dress so it looked different, and they would accessorize it with different types of jewelry. They would go from a turquoise to a coral, or or, or tote pad, you know, bring in something that would change it a bit. Okay, yeah. I'm folding gently in your uh, eggs, and, and I also need to fold in gently our uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, which is funny. It says two large teaspoons of baking powder. I wasn't aware that there were large and small measures, but nonetheless. Yeah, I guess that's sort okay. of an overflowing <laughs> right. of the versus a okay. pinch. And then when we get to the waffle iron, I want to hear the fantastic story of that amazing waffle yeah, iron we're because hoping, it is back to my right. childhood. It smells. It does. It smells. It smells like yeah. a like a morning on Meyer Terrace in Rockville, yeah. Maryland. Yeah, we need to get these on really quickly. So while I'm doing this and working on the um, waffles, we also have tea that we're making that yes. belongs to Lady Bird Johnson. So you can drop in these tea bags. Right, right. We've got we've got boiling water. There Five it is. Drops of Ooh. boiling water. And then I'm taking the, the, the family size tea, tea bags. bags. Yeah, we're going to throw those in. in. Okay. And we can't forget the cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick, stick for and flavor. There are some cloves that have been boiling away in the water as well. So it's kind of like a holiday ish tea. But the ingredients that I love love are the. Uh, <laughs> the frozen juice concentrate. That now this, yeah, and this goes okay. back to like what my mom used to do with Sprite and frozen concentrates to make a sort of uh, um, well, seasonal and... Okay. 
So we have, you have to get the batter on. If these um, mm -hmm. sprinklers go off. Yeah, they're not. They're kind of so there goes the lime, mm -hmm. the limeade. Yeah. And this is this is exactly what my mom would throw in the summertime. Throw in a little bit of Sprite. Yeah. And then you can make even a spritzer for the adult crowd. Or you can keep it a tea. And this is Lady Bird Johnson's Ranch yeah. Spice Tea. tea. Um, the ranch was one of Lady Bird's favorite places in the world. The Johnsons traveled there. It was their their Western White House. And she did a tour of that facility similar to what Jackie did with the White House itself on uh, national television. So I'm going to chop this up a little bit and get it all busted up, the, uh, the concentrate. So when I was growing up with this waffle iron, my parents always threw away the first two waffles because they stuck. So that's what I'm going to do too. Oh, but look at that. That popped right off. That's nice. It did. Oh, this smells okay. good. Yeah, this was my mom's what wedding present in 1964. So we're not only all about the history, we're all about, you know, vintage and reuse. Sure, and retro, <laughs> the retro waffle. It's going to taste exactly like So have you put in the orange juice? Yep, yep, yep. I got both in it and it's stirred My, that now. is a really, really interesting color. <laughs> <coughs> you know what it does, though, in yeah. looking at it? It matches that sort of Aztec mm -hmm. uh, uh, chi china and, and, and flatware that, that yeah. Mrs. Johnson had in her uh, living room. And the ranch is a, it's a fantastic place. I know why they went back there. And I actually interviewed and, and, uh -huh. and hung out with for the day uh, Mrs. Johnson's former uh, secretary. And she would. She said that Mrs. Johnson was so in tune to her guests going out to the ranch yeah. that she knew their favorite books. She knew the size of their clothes. She would go out to the ranch when she had a full guest coming for the weekend and try out all the fixtures and all the outlets and all the rooms to be the perfect hostess. Have the menu that they wanted. Yeah. One guy even wanted. He wanted to ride the range like a like a like, like a, a real, real cowboy. cowboy. Yeah, yeah. So she did. She got him. She got him the the Wrangler jeans. She got him a bandana. A big. 10 gallon Stetson hat and boots and the guy came down with stirrups and you know the people out there of course were kind of chuckling themselves but this guy had an absolute blast it was just like you know going to a dude ranch but Mrs. Mrs. Johnson was very very careful about um, uh, attending to her guests post White House at, at the ranch and, and during the White House I'm sure she did the same thing. So did she have a sense when she was there that that ranch would someday be a historic site? 100%. One hundred percent. She was at that point. She was so conscious. She far outlived yeah. uh, right. President Johnson. He he died shortly after the White House, and she knew that that ranch would become their legacy, mm -hmm. and people would come in there. And she was very careful to design it that way, and know what items would be on display, and what would be on her desk in her bedroom, and the fact that the, her personal bathroom and walk-in closet would be open to the public. She actually researched it by going to the Truman House in Independence, Missouri, mm -hmm. and the guy, the, the, the park ranger, um, David, oh, his name, all the women, right, I know, yeah. the women, yeah. the, the, men, the men's names, but, but David, David Schaffer, David okay. Schaffer is, yeah. is, is down in LBJ Ranch, and he was at the Truman House when Mrs. Johnson came through to tour the Truman House to see how they preserved the Truman's life, because she was the longest living mm -hmm. first lady ever at 90, 98, I think, uh, Bess Truman. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Johnson lived well into her 90s as well, um, and, and she very much knew that that ranch would be her showpiece and her legacy, so she, she preserved it as such, very carefully. And then is that the same thing that some of our subsequent first ladies have done as well with this sort of knowledge <coughs> that they are also protecting this legacy of the, the husband who they were part of you know, in partnership with very, you know, very, very much. Nancy yeah. Reagan is probably the best yeah. example of that. I mean, because poor President Reagan with the Alzheimer's was around for so long, and she did nothing in her post White House life mm -hmm. other than preserve his legacy or work for research that would have helped people with the same affliction. Mm -hmm. um, so these, these, these women, even they've gone back. Uh, Pat Nixon did this. Mm -hmm. uh, Lou Hoover did this. Uh, Mamie Eisenhower did this, secured the president's boyhood homes and made sure that the library and the final resting place of these presidential couples 
would be intact and at the places where these presidents were born. So to research most of the first ladies, you go to where the president was born, and, and the, the, the ladies are there as well because they know that, that one of their jobs is to protect, defend, and, and promote that presidential legacy of their husband. Okay, all right. Would you like to try? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? I'll give you these. I feel, I feel like I'm in the press. In All right. Let's so see, how Flores, see how Flores did. The tea's probably right. I know. Here. I want to try the tea as well. Here we go. I know we've made a horrendous mess, and there was smoke all throughout the Yeah, room. but you know that we've done fine. Yeah, right. no, no, no. Say, these are some of the most complicated waffles that I've ever encountered because you have to make the egg whites stiff and then fold them back in. It's um, fantastic. But they taste it's good? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Okay, so can I uh, the tea? Yeah, you try the tea. I'm going to try your tea. You try nice waffles. job on the waffles. I'm going to finish these. Okay. This, um, this is just like growing up. I'm not even kidding. It's so good. Oh, the tea is really interesting. It's kind of tangy because I think it's sure, a sure, sure. stick in here. I don't know that I'm going to put limeade in my tea in the future, but it's like a punchy kind of tea. The waffles are fantastic. And I'm it, goes, it goes with fiestaware. Do we have any questions oh, let me that see. come to through try. on Facebook that we can answer? All right. All right. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you want to um, see more about the recipes that are in the First Lady's Cookbook, you know, come to the gift shop on our website, and you can order it at womenshistory.org. I recommend that you go to Andy's website at firstladiesman.com because there are some fun anecdotes and stories about yeah. the first ladies. And past videos and with past you videos. and the organization here. And then you can get some information about how to order his book, which I can tell you from experience, they're both awesome choices for uh, mother, grandmother, aunt, so uh, women of a certain age. Oh, thank you. To love them. Thank and you very much. Um, it's what I've got my mother for Christmas. And you can Kids are getting, I'll be honest, I, I'm surprised at how many of yeah. my friends from growing up, former classmates, yeah. people that have been to my speeches, buy them yeah. for their daughters and their sons, mm -hmm. because there's a good message for everyone in there about what these women have done as the most influential, unpaid, and unelected women in the world, and what they do for the better, betterment of the world, the better of humanity, mm -hmm. as they do in that role as First Lady. So. I almost forgot we still had two off this Okay. Yeah, we, those, this, pull, tea, this tea is great. It too. is pretty fun. All right, I'm going to pull these off. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I'm missing that we did not burn down the building. No, no, no. no we no, did have a fun Facebook Live. So Always. Cheers. cheers. Happy, happy holidays. holidays.